Hi guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So um, yeah, that seemed to go down really well that last video, making the um, or starting to make the tool holders for the quick change tool post on the mini lathe. So uh, we've made a little bit of progress. Let's carry on with it. So once this is completed, I'll cut two off the end, the thicker ones, and then back up with this cutter and drop it all down to 25 mil thickness. So uh, yeah, there'll be three mil to come off. Three more mil. I'll see how we get on with the fly cutter. I might do with that. Say swapping between cutters. I can only take about 0.2 with a fly cutter, whereas this I can take. Well, I can't take a mil, but I've been taking about three quarter mil cuts. So final two time cut cross surface and we're down to 28 mil. Happy days. Uh, so I think I'll machine the end square, this end now. Okay, that's giving myself something to register off for a length. Need to decide on the length now, and I think what I'm going to do is cut it off using an 8mm carbide cutter. So the originals, 28mm overall. I want to beef up this bottom part, the bit the tool sits on. So I'm going to go, I'm going to beef that up by 3mm, I think. So I think 31mm overall height. So it means I've got to cut 31mm off the end of the bar, or 32 So I marked a line, and solid carbide 8mm bit, 2mm cut. Cooling on it just to stop the hot swap basically and stop warming up the part as well. And uh, I've got very few carbide cutters, so I'm trying to look after it a bit. that parallel over there now and finish it off okay so that's the first one dropped off let's go back and do the next one well, there we are that's the first two chopped off that didn't take long um, so back up with the fly cutter I've just measured the step here it's four mil so I've got to take another three mil off here so I think I'll get the fly cutter up take three mil off the top of that and then there'll be less meat to cut through when I cut the others up so as we left off in the last episode I just cut these two off um, which were when it was the full section. These are going to be for uh, probably one of them's a boring bar holder at least, and the other one's going to be for a drill chuck. So we've got those two cut off. Um, I moved along from there when it was one solid piece and machined it down to minimize the material back to the size we're looking for. Um, and that made it easier when I had to hacksaw three cuts to make four blocks so I hacked all them off squared them all up and as you can see I've shampered all these blocks up all the way around now on all their edges in fact just realized I haven't done oh I have done that edge okay so um yeah that's those four blocked up I need to run the shamper cut around all the outsides of these two now so uh yeah I'll just pop them back up and get them shampered so you got two at a time in there uh spreads a load across the vice why not less setups so, uh, climb milling always gives me a better finish when I'm using the chamfering bit. Just run it back along. I'll uh, rotate these back over with the dovetail facing down and then spin them 180. So I'm doing all the short faces at the moment. Okay. Block the vice off. Do a bit of a. 
okay. Not moving the cutter, not doing anything. Do the back face. Meaning to make up a little chamfering jig for putting 45 degrees on blocks, you know, with a rotor motor, something like that. Make an interesting little project. I've seen a few people do that with a, you know, carbide end mill with a, a little jig, a little nest with a 90 degree nest in it. We can just run blocks through. Maybe I'll look into seeing what I can find to do that. Um, yeah. So I'm regularly doing machining sharpers on things, but, uh, you know, when it's sort of standard block work like this, um, that might be a good idea. So you can see I've got the chamfer on there now. So flick and 180. We'll have done all the short sides then. So I've got a fixed point of reference with that cutter in the air above the vise and distance in from the back jaw. So when I come to do the long sides, it's the same thickness apart. So I'll just put them in the vise the other way around, close the vise up, won't move the cutter or anything like that. And I can, uh, I've got the... Got the same set in for the other ones. So, uh, yeah, I'll carry on like this. That's the first side done. And set up again on the second side, so I haven't moved the cutter at all since doing those end faces. Um, just straight back in on the same parallels, referencing the same back face, obviously with a block in the same leg down orientation. So that's all four sides on this top done now, and what I'll do then is flip it over and do these two faces. So I'm doing everything on these blocks, um, you know, stepping them along basically. So cut with a climb, run it back to the other end because I want to start with a climb again on the next cut. Um, yeah, carry on. dirty technique. Um, rotate the cutter until you get a flute in line with the back face. I've got a parallel here. Finger pressure. I, yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> I've got to get my head in shot a bit. Um, so just as you can see I'm too far off the edge of the block. So looking down at the daylight between the parallel and the block there that's the edge of the cutter on the edge of the block. Quick and dirty. It's not, uh, it's nothing crucial here. I'm just going to set a zero there in Y. Okay, so, um, 10 mil carbide cutter. Slot I need is going to be 12 mil. That original there thickness was 3.8. I want it to be uh, 5 mil, uh, no, 6 mil. So, the very least I can move this cutter is six, so I'll do that now. And it's a 12 mil slot. So there's six. It's a 12 mil slot, it's a 10 mil cutter. So if I go to seven, I'm gonna be in the middle of a slot and I'll lock the cutter there. At seven mil, that's right there. Let me just lock Y on my table. Um, rule, quick sanity check, uh, let's wind it down a bit, wind the cutter down a bit, 
not touching. Quick sanity check. Seven mil. Okay. Um, right, so I want to do a touch off now. So just use my quill de arrow. Let me lock my head, that's it. Cutter just touching, set to zero. Okay. Right, we are ready to go. So I think we'll slow that cutter down a bit from where I was just now. Come off the job. Uh, I'm going to, let's say, mill at a time, shall we? Could probably do more like three or four. I'll run a milk cut. Turn that feed down. Turn the feed on. Let's do it. So I'm going to run these down to, you know, 11 point, maybe 12, maybe full depth with 12 mil. And then we'll do the step overs. So I'll step over towards the bottom. Um, until I get a reading of 6 mil thickness on the bottom, on that rib on the bottom. When I get, so it's roughly a mil across. When I get that reading, I'll then open it up off the other side until I get a reading or until the tool fits in there nicely. And then I'll keep those readings for all of them. It should be equal about from where we are now with it being a 10 mil cutter. It should be 1 mil up, 1 mil down, plus or minus, and we should be there or thereabouts. So I'm going to do the same reading on all of them, so I'll just let that, let that go. I'm not worried about the 6 mil accuracy on the bottom. I may just step either side, 0.7, something like that, have a measure of the slot, and just get to that equal reading rather than worry about the 6 mil thickness. It's going to be in the ballpark. It might be 6.1, it might be 5.9, you know, 5.8, 6.2, doesn't matter. Because obviously the height of these is adjustable. equal about method and then just alter the offset till I get the right width stick the back with all of them that pretty much was pussy put in the ring with that one there I think I'll do a two mil cut this time come on off you come so a three mil depth there about See how this lights it. Might make up a little bit of cut in it. It's be nice. Let's see how it cuts. Speed the cutter up a bit. How long does it get covered in small? any heat problems, I don't think I need any coolant here. Two mil, two mil cut seems happy. It is a carbide cutter. One of the few I have. Uh, I could probably up the feed rate on there if I quite a lot, but I'm not in any great rush. So, I'll do another 2 mil. I'm going to go to a nominal 12 mil deep. Might even just measure the tools and see what they are. 
I believe they're 12 mil square. So I uh, covered my calipers in swore. Twelve point zero one, eleven point nine. Yeah, twelve mil depth will do. So we're on the last cut. You can see twelve mil there. Um, I have set the stop so that we'll consistently come down to the twelve mil. And it's only a one mil cut the last one because I started with a one and we're going to twelve, so we'd have to end with a one. Next. So I moved the job towards me in Y, 0.2, and I'm running a climb cut up that back wall. I'll offset 0.2 the other way and run back through. Then we'll have a measure and see what changes to that offset we need to achieve the nice fit on a tool holder. Um, it does need to be tight, but it, I don't, you know, I don't want a mill clearance, but 0.1 should be fine. But. Uh, that's how we're going to go about it. So once this cut runs out, quite a nice, nice finish on that back wall. Let's offset the other way, point two. Here we go. Back the other way, climb cut again on this front face. Then I'll have a measure. Don't know whether you can see the screen there, but uh, one mil offset in Y. I'm going to go the other way to one mil. Okay, I'm back the other way. So I've just done the one mil cut. Um, didn't bit. As it turned out, that wall thickness there was 6.1. So I've just taken 1.1 1 .1 off the back face and it's, it's literally size for size, but it doesn't fit. So I'm going to take 0 0.1 off the top now. So that'll be a 1.1 .1 offset in both directions. So back the other way to 1.1 and I think we should be on a winner. So it was 1.1 offset in both directions to get the fit I want. Maybe that's a 3.8 cover, not a 10 mil. Anyway, as long as the sizes are right, doesn't matter. <laughs> I've got my readings now for the consecutive parts, so I can put the others up when I get all this dwarf off them. Put the others up, dovetail down, face against the back, cut the sword at the 12 mil, step back and pull 1.1. Job's done. So, one set of measurements. I'll try the tool in each one when it's finished. I'm going to try it in this one in a moment. I think we should be on it. Hopefully, our tool will fit in there now. Lovely. Just a little bit of rock. Good. She's in there. Okay, all four done. Um, yeah, you saw how I did it, how we went about it, and they all fit nicely with the lathe tool. So, uh, and I've tried a couple of the other 12mm lathe tools, they all fit. Nice. So, 6mm grub screws, 4, need to locate them in the top. Obviously the distance back is going to be slightly different because of the slot width. Um, and then obviously the 6mm grub screw for the adjuster, or the 6 M6 six tap hole for the adjuster as well. So let's get on and get those holes in. I've done a bit of working out. Obviously this one is central about and it's five and a half mil from the back face. So just gonna center drill that first. And these are all M6. I'm a little bit past there actually. That'll do. So, my set of four grub screws for the tool clamp are 6.225 across. So let's measure, uh, move that 
6.225, so zero zero is that centre one. Okay, first one, 12 and a half mil offset. Well, first grub screw, which is there. Let's just stop there, and the next one, 22 and a half mil. Okay, I'm happy now. So 12 and a half offset the other way. And then 22 and a half again. Oh, too far. There. You'll notice I got my stop set up against the back here. Okay, so clean that off. That's that one set of drills. repeat the operation. dry throat. It's uh, warm here in the shed today. Well, spring has sprung, shall we say. Wasn't well, supposed to be a nice day, but it is. For 12 and a half okay. And the last one, 22 and a half, so I'll finish this one on camera and then there's going to be another, another two to do like this. So I'm going to repeat the procedure almost precisely, obviously with a uh, six mil tapping drill. Next, right, so we've got a zero. I'm back to zero. And that will be the first hole on the third block. And so on and so forth. Nothing really of note here. Um, the depth of this hole, it's a blind hole. If I drill it right through, we're going to break through into that slot. So um, I've got 10, uh, 10 and a half mil there. So I just pop the end of the rule down on that. Set a zero. Rule to mil. I can go 11 mil down. So drill a hole 11 mil deep. Ten. Okay. 
That's 11. Okay, same offset, 6.225. And twelve and a half. So yeah, same coordinates, just bang these through. So these are going right through, breaking through the other side. Uh, nice to set a stop so I couldn't possibly hit the back. Through is a stop. Okay. Um, yeah, I just do more like that. Well, I'm not being totally brave, but somewhat brave. So power tapping halfway through. The stopper there. I'm run the rest by hand. It's a shame to snap a top off in one of these at this late stage. And then I've got all the glory of fighting with it to get the broken tap out. Okay, reverse and out. So yeah, it's uh, coming up to the last hole now. And the blind holes at the back of it, I did not power tap. I just did it by hand in the truck yet. Okay, 22 and a half, and that is the last tapped hole of 20, yes, 20, for now, we haven't got to the other blocks yet. So this is a taper tap. Uh, one of a new set I've got actually, and uh, from a, a regular contributor, uh, mats. So thanks for those mats, and they work a treat. Okay. Um, just put a little counter sink in these now. You know, I don't recall if I've done that back one. Um, yes, I have, but I do need to put a plug tap down in the back holes. Do I do that now? No, I'll do that by hand. Well, here we are. I've just fitted the first one up. Um, they're all drilled and tapped now. These ones still want cleaning up and uh, little champers I put on the top of the holes, the tapped holes. One thing I have got is a good selection of 6 mil grub screws, hence why I carried on with the 6 mil. Um, yeah, happy days. Uh, that's the basics of the tool holder then. Um, I haven't got any. I normally use brake lead uh, cleaner or carburetor cleaner before I uh, black out or black parkerize the uh, cold blue the blocks. Um, so I'll have to get myself another tin of that and then I can degrease them all and then cold blue them so that they've got the the black anti-rust finish as it were. So yeah that's uh, that's the standard blocks done. Um, probably in the next episode now we'll finish these off and we'll get the other ones done. So what I do find is, where is it? Let me get one of the others. So what I do find more often than not is I've got a 12mm boring bar, I've got a 10mm boring bar, um, but I have got arbors like the chucks that I've got in the mill here, let's just uh, bring you up to that, that chuck I've turned up a 10mm, 12mm uh, arbor for. So I think what I'm going to do, I did plan on 12mm at the beginning, is put a 12mm reamed hole through here. Um, and then we'll look at some grub screws. It's going to be slightly different to these, but that's going to be for a drill chuck. So I do need to see what chuck I've got, or what chuck I can find that's of a reasonable quality. I do like, what's this one? I think it's Rome, is it? I'm uh, not in a position to afford an Albrecht. It's a Rome, R-O-H-N, so, uh, and this has been excellent. So I think I might look out for another one of these. Um, 
I mean, I have the tailstock in the lay in the mini lathe anyway for larger drills, but I think for the smaller ones, this goes sort of not to six mil or not a quarter inch. I think I'll get myself another one of those. I think I got this one from RDG, so I'll probably get the shopping list out and uh, order another one of those. Well, as I regularly say at the end of videos, guys, I think that's about it for this one. I don't know what sort of length it'll be, but uh, I quite enjoyed this little job. Um, it's been nice to work on something a bit larger than the tiny parts I've been working on lately with that engine I built. So, um, yeah, and again, it's nice to be back on the mini lathe. It's a little job I've been meaning to do for a while, just so that I've got some good tool holders for when I do get up and running. So I haven't forgotten about the wiring. I've ordered some 20mm um, cable glands, uh, which should be arriving any time, and that will allow me to carry on with the wiring. And I've got some terminal blocks as well that are going to go in the little junction box on the back of the, the head. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting going on this. And, of course, at some point, um, I've got to strip it all down again and we've got to get it painted and all the rest. But I, I want to get all the guards done and all everything complete and then it like a, a dry build should we call it make sure it's running then strip it a bit put it all back together and uh, we'll have the finished product i hope one of these fine days and again the alexander here it's still here the little cutter grinder so um i hadn't forgotten about that and in fact it would have been useful to have a cutter grinder to make up the chamfering bits the various chamfering bits and of course i'm going to be making lathe tools with it as well for the mini lathe um, carbide tools, high speed steel, what have you, when we get up and running. So it's going to be running alongside, and I think I'll probably do a couple of episodes of mini lathe, maybe an episode or two of the cutter grinder, and they'll be interspersed as we go through the latter half of this year then. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll saw you, that we'll saw you, yes, I certainly saw you when I was sawing those blocks off, that was hard graft. Anyway, we will see you very soon. Cheers now.